Okay, welcome to lesson three on energy. So in the previous two uh, lessons, we learned about, number one, the types of different energy in chemical systems, and then we defined the term system and surroundings, and we talked about the idea that if you place two objects in contact with one another and one of the objects has a higher kinetic energy or thermal energy than the other object, that energy is going to move from the object with higher kinetic energy or thermal energy to the one that has lower kinetic energy. So now we're going to take this into a little bit more detail in lesson three. And you can see at the top of the diagram I've listed the law of conservation of energy, which states specifically the process that we're learning about. Now, in this particular video, I want to keep it short. And what we're going to do is an example to cement the concepts that we learned in uh, lesson number two and to take it maybe a little bit further. So for this example, what we're going to do is pretend that we have a, a chunk of zinc metal. So this is zinc metal. All right, and we have uh, heated the zinc up. So I'll just draw the picture here of a candle. So we have the zinc metal uh, in a flame. It's going to get super, super hot. All right, and what we're going to do is take that zinc and we're going to place it uh, into a coffee cup that is full of water. All right, and uh, the water, which I'll label H2O, all right, is cool, all right? We're gonna have this at room temperature, 25 degrees centigrade. The fact that we have the zinc over here in a flame, all right, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, that's gonna be super hot. Now, to piggyback on, on what we did in the last video, the zinc metal is our system. And the coffee cup over here uh, is our surroundings. All right, and we're going to take the zinc and we're going to place it inside the coffee cup, down inside the water. And I'm going to draw a box and I'm going to make it oversized a little bit because we have some diagramming to do here. Um, so we can easily see. So this is the zinc metal. This is my zinc metal. And this is a hot body. You know, we place it in the water, it's going to sizzle and pop and stuff like that. And again, the liquid surrounding it is cold. But in contrast, being room temperature, at 25 degrees centigrade and the metal coming in from being held in a candle. Now let's think about what's going to happen. The zinc has been heated, heated up a super amount in the flame. It should be obvious to, to you that it's going to have a, a kinetic energy. And so I'll, I'll make, we'll make some little diagrams over here. It's going to have a kinetic energy which is significantly higher than the kinetic energy of the water. All right, which also means that the potential energy of the zinc in terms of thermal energy, right, in terms of thermal energy is also a lot higher. Now, it's important for you to understand that when we place these two objects so that they're in contact with one another, the energy of the system and the surroundings is going to equal out. The only way that that can happen, because energy is not going to run backwards, the only way that that can happen is by the uh, system, which is our hot zinc, uh, giving up energy. So I'm going to do that this way. I'm going to say uh, negative E here. And energy is going to be transferred from that kinetic energy, and therefore potential energy will be shifting 
And where is it going to shift? It's going to shift out here into the water. Now, what does that mean in terms of the temperature? All right, so the temperature of the zinc, all right, I'm going to pause for a second. I want you to think about this. Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Hopefully, you realize that the temperature of the zinc goes down. Why? Because it's losing kinetic energy into the liquid. And the temperature of the H2O rises. Okay, it has to go up. All right, now, this transition, energy leaving the zinc, thermal energy leaving the zinc, and going into the, into the liquid that surrounds it. So the surroundings is going to increase in energy. And the system is going to decrease in energy. This transition is going to go on until, so let me, let me put some words on this. So the energy, the energy transfers until one, The energy of system and surroundings equalizes. So the kinetic energy of both the system and the surroundings are going to be the same. And number two, the temperature of the surroundings and the system will be the same. Okay, now, to finish up, something that I, I haven't mentioned here yet is about designating what's going on with energy in both compartments. Since the system is losing energy, the process for the system was exothermic. Because it's losing heat energy, it's losing thermal energy, it's losing potential energy, right? It's, uh, it's, everything is shifting down because it's being shifted to the liquid which surrounds it. So this is what's going on with the system. And in terms of the surroundings, the process is endothermic. It's endothermic because the surroundings has been absorbing uh, the, in, the incoming energy. So as a result, the temperature of the surroundings goes up. The temperature of the system goes down. The, the system energy equalizes. So when we're done with this, the kinetic energy of the system equals the kinetic energy of the surroundings. All right. And uh, everything is summarized here. All right. And with that... I'm going to conclude the video. Remember that if you don't get something, then pause the video, think about it, go back over if, and watch the video as many times as you need to in order to get it. All right, so this is Chem Doctor signing off.